welcome Scott. Welcome everybody. Thank you. I'll uh, begin the East Montpelier Flock Board meeting on May 1st, uh, 2023, at 6.30 p.m. Um, why don't we, since we have a mixture of people online and here, Flock Board members online and here, why don't we go around and introduce ourselves? Uh, I'm Carl Etnayer. I'm serving as chair tonight, uh, uh, vice chair of the Slack Board. I'm John Jewett, and I'm just sitting in my chair on the Slack Board. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Zoe Christensen, and like John, I'm just sitting in my chair. <laughs> and online? Uh, Scott Hess, I am sitting in a uh, my personal chair. Very good. And, uh, Next is additions to the agenda. Do we have any additions to our agenda? I see none on the select board memo. Very good. Then it's um, review of the minutes from April 17th, 2023. Does anyone have any comments on the minutes from April 17th? No. Okay, seeing okay. none, there a motion. Motion to accept the minutes. Look good to me. I'll expect that. Mm -hmm. Look good to me, too. Any Thank discussion? You. Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes of mm -hmm. April 16th. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see. We have two sets of minutes here. So I believe uh, this is a joint motion to uh, approve the town forum and the select board meeting minutes. Is that correct? That would be my motion. Okay. Uh, so we have two sets of minutes. Uh, I like them both. And uh, let's take a vote. All those in favor of approving these minutes, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. The motion is passed. So we will go to the second item, which is public comment. This is an opportunity for the public to speak out on issues that are not on the agenda that uh, they might want to raise with us. Are there any members of the public here who want to raise issues that are not on the agenda later on? Are members of the public here, but presumably that's not what they want to do right now. <laughs> so we will move on. And our next item of business is to welcome Zoe Christensen as a newly appointed select board member for uh, one year of a three-year term. So until town meeting day next year, welcome aboard. Thank you so much. So this is just an item to give you a chance to ask us questions and for, for us to, to uh, give you some unasked for advice. Great, <laughs> bring on the advice. Oh, you get plenty of it. <laughs> Unsolicited or otherwise. Right. Welcome, welcome. Very, very excited to be working with you in person next for the next meeting. Thank, thank you for joining us and uh, look, looking forward. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. We're we're all excited to have you. We voted unanimously to to select you, and uh, we uh, we recognize that it's uh, it's tough to start uh, a little bit late in the select board year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope that you'll take advantage of the resources that the town has, that the Vermont League of Cities and Towns has, to train you as a select board member, and feel free to. Ask us any questions. Thank if you, you. If you don't have our, all our contact information, we should make sure to get it to you after the yeah. meeting. Don't worry, speaking don't worry, Zoe. This is my third meeting, so I'm uh, somewhat of a uh, rookie freshman too. So we'll make it. We'll make it through together. Thank you. And speaking of contact information, uh, do you have a town email address yet? Not yet. Okay, but you know about the process. You've talked. Had that yeah. Discussion. Well, yeah. not yet. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So. So that's an option, uh, and I would encourage you to do that because that makes it easy to comply with the uh, public records requests in the future. If you have all your email correspondence on that account and then you just uh, archive everything from there, then if somebody asks you for all the emails that you've uh, sent or received about such and such subject, you have them there. I don't have one, and I didn't even know that was available to us, so yeah. something I should investigate too. You're on the list too, Mr. Hess. Well, thank you. Dubai didn't even know it was available. I, I appreciate it. I, I wouldn't have expected otherwise from our town administrator. 
Okay. Any other words of, of wisdom or support for Zoe? I think it's, I think it, these words of support will come out over time. Yeah. <laughs> words of wisdom. <laughs> and always ask questions. Yeah. There's some always ask the question. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're all learning together. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I do that all the time. And if we're not having enough fun, help us out and have more fun. Okay, I'll try to do that. Yeah. And I'll ask as many questions as I can as long as people will tell me when I should stop asking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next item is to discuss the Murray, Bliss, and Barnes Roads ash tree removal project and to consider a quote to remove additional trees. I believe we have members of the Resilient Roads Committee here to, uh, to talk about that. That's true. Okay. Paul K. <laughs> welcome Paul K. to welcome Jeff Quito. Evening. Um, <clears throat> I guess I can chime in. Uh, the uh, original count that we had done that was part of the RFP for the project uh, was 193 trees. Um, the contractor, Matt Foster, brought it to our attention that there were more trees than were tabulated in the RFP. Uh, the Resilient Roads Committee went out um, last Friday, four of us, carefully counted stumps, carefully counted standing trees, um, and found that, yes, indeed, there were 21 additional trees. Uh, so that's about an 11% difference. Um, although you could look at the RFP and think, hey, it's a lump sum bid. The trees were marked um, and bidders had an opportunity to, to see the scope of the project. Um, Paul and I feel that it's reasonable to uh, compensate Matt for the additional work, uh, given the mistake in the count. Um, so it's about $149 per tree. And uh, the uh, revised quote uh, was provided to the select board. It's a little bit over $3,000. Okay, and and uh, you know your tweet your trees. I assume that you were able to verify from the stumps that these were actual ash trees that were cut. Um, yes, they're they're fresh cut trees within the right of way. Um, the logs are still adjacent to the stumps, so it's kind of obvious that they were project trees. Um, they're not all ash trees. Some of them are other hazard trees because we do mark other other species when it makes sense. Right. But okay. the, the truth is that yes, you can you can tell <laughs> both from the wood and the bark and everything what kind of tree it is. So right. there right. shouldn't be mistakes that way. Well, I, I would expect you to be able to tell on a starless night, uh, cloudy, uh, just by sense of smell, Paul. <laughs> well, or or by feel, because I can't see it. Yeah, right. <laughs> the, the trees have already been cut down? Um, not all of them. I think there are about 28 trees that are still standing. Uh, that was Matt's estimate, and he was... Um, holding on the project until this was resolved. Okay, so if we don't approve it, then they'll still be standing. Or, uh, or, there's, or there's negotiation. <laughs> he, he said he would at least cut another four trees because uh, four of the 28 inch plus trees uh, in the table re remain. Um, I, I expect bidders to be able to do business with the town and to rely on representations that the town makes about the scope of the project. And if there was an error made in the documents for the bidders, uh, then I don't think that they should either eat that cost uh, because they didn't go and double double check the count of the trees or that they should uh, you know, stop before the project is, is finished. So 
if we, if we have money in the budget to to handle this, I, I think it's a good idea to have them finish the project. What, yeah. what do the rest of you guys think? I agree. Especially, he said there's a number of other trees that are 28 inches plus in size. Those mm -hmm. are dangerous that they yeah they fail. What happens? You know, you wear what happens with tree with ash trees. They get they get yeah you know, when they get killed when they die they get really brittle and they just kind of yeah. pull apart with the wind. Yeah. So just for historical background for the record, this is part of an ongoing project here in East Montpelier where we are identifying. Had, or we have identified hazardous ash tree six inches and larger in the right of way that uh, could uh, could blow over into or explode onto the road, and we are preemptively removing them because we realize that the emerald ash borer is here and it's it's causing damage or potentially causing damage to all the ashes in town. Uh, following following up on that, uh, the board might be interested that. We actually found emerald ash borer galleries and several trees on Barnes Road uh, that uh, were ones that we had marked last fall, but we hadn't noticed that they had actually actually had emerald ash borer uh, damage. Um, so uh, we're glad that uh, this project is being done and geographically uh, the location makes a lot of sense now that we know the Emerald ash borer is actually in that area. Right, right. Where, and that all? For the galleries. Hmm. Where were they? Yeah. Uh, where were the trees, you mean? Uh, where on the trees were the galleries well, located? Uh, right down, you know, at our height, which is where we could actually peel some bark off and find the galleries. Okay. You know, otherwise, you the symptoms of the problem are are not very visible <laughs> to an untrained eye and uh and we we know what we were looking for and we still have didn't notice it uh you know when we marked the trees and and it had been in the trees for several years because some of them were completely dead and one of them even was snapped off where it was still six inches in diameter up in the top and tree was only probably a eight or nine inch tree and the top was already broken out of it so it, it had obviously been there for for a while because uh, some of those trees were actually dead it right. usually takes three minimum three years to kill the tree so <clears throat> so it's it's reasonable to expect that we've got it in other <laughs> number of other places probably in town where we haven't found it so this is why we're preemptively doing this, because if we were just starting now, <clears throat> all the trees that we've removed in the last few years would would still be ahead of us. And so right. uh, uh, we're kind of hoping that we can speed this along even faster, because we've still got quite a few trees to, to get down before they do start getting seriously infested and breaking up. Would you remind us of the, the numbers in the project and where we are right now? How many total ash trees were identified in the initial inventory of the ones that we wanted to take down along uh, town roads? And how many have we taken down so far? This well, would be the, uh, the fourth year uh, where we've contracted to do ash tree removal projects. Uh, so some work has been done under contract, the majority of it. And the road crew is also doing some work. So uh, overall, we've probably done around 800 trees um, once they finish this year's project. And I think roughly uh, in town, within the right of way, we had approximately 2,400. Paul, somewhere we around had, there. We had 20, 26, 96, or something like that to start with, and then a certain number of them. What was it about? Uh, Two or three hundred were were in under the power lines. Uh, yeah, some are utility trees, right? <laughs> so, so those have have disappeared. So, we're working away at the. So you're taking what eight hundred from about twenty four hundred roughly, uh, so, and that's where we are. 
So we're a third of the way there after four years. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's a lot more project or a lot more progress than other towns uh, across the state. Uh, we're kind of kind of out out in front of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and you say uh, you talked about accelerating the process. Possibly, what what would that look like for the next year? Well, it'd be great if we could uh, double it. And um, the uh, state is expecting that uh, there'll be more forest service money available starting next year. Um, we didn't get a grant for this last project. We had received grants for the prior three. Um, and hopefully uh, more money will be available next year and that would uh, help us accelerate things. Okay. So when should we be looking to apply for that forest service money? Uh, that'd be at the end of the year. At the end of the calendar year? Yeah. Okay. In the meantime, uh, I've talked with Guthrie and, and, you know, when the guys have a little break in time and can do a few trees here and there, they're going to try and do that. So we can <clears throat> keep, keep moving ahead as fast as possible. Okay. How, how will those trees be marked? Uh, well, we'll, you know, with, with the <laughs> Guthrie, you mean? Yeah, the ones that Guthrie will be taking down. Well, you know, I'm in contact with him fairly regularly. And so, <clears throat> you know, we just, he'll tell me that we might have some time to do such and such. And so uh, we'll go out and, and mark him if yeah. need be. Uh, you know, he's pretty savvy. Uh, so <laughs> we, we don't have to explain everything to him every time. <laughs> yeah. You know, he, he's pretty sharp. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I, I'll jump in a truck with him or whatever, or, or Jeff and I will go out or, uh, you know, we'll go out as a whole crew and, and, and do it. Uh, however, it works best for, for him. And we happen to have yeah, our I... sharp enemy road foreman here. Gu Guthrie Perry, do you have any comments on this process? No, I think it's going along fairly well. And uh, like Paul was saying, there's a few roads out there for sure that have just uh, four trees on them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really make sense to send a contractor right. to that type of stuff. So when we can take some of these smaller projects, I mean, we did Dodge Road, and that was, I think, around 40. Between, between Dodge and Johnson, I think it might have been close to 60. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, yeah. And that was that had some challenging trees on it, but we took a and made it a winter project and mm -hmm. done. So mm -hmm. I guess we made it. A little longer than we thought it was going to. Mm. So how, how does this additional work that you didn't have before, how does that fit into your road maintenance year? So with County Road last year, we didn't do a project. Mm -hmm. um, and depending on the winter, if you can get a, a week of just decent weather with no snow, kind of a dry week is what we'll call it, mm -hmm. then we can really focus on it and do a really a good chunk of it usually. So right. that's for this next winter coming up, I want to make sure we have a you know, because you got to do the hearing and all of that. Right. Make sure we have that another chunk of roads situated and ready to go. Right. Okay. Paul, do you, you need a motion for to for the extra expenditure of funds? Is there a motion necessary? Uh, there is, and uh, there are two numbers that I've seen. Which are the, which is the one that is to be in the motion? Thirty one thirty four or thirty one fifty? Yeah. Thirty one thirty. And I initially okay. sent a quote for thirty one fifty, okay. and then uh, revised that email. That it's the thirty one thirty four. It's a calculation. Okay. As long as the committee, I'll make the motion. As long as the committee uh, agrees with that, I'll make that motion for thirty one fifty. So uh, thirty one thirty four is a the sum that we're using. So the motion. I think that's, that sounds even better. Sixteen bucks motion, more. The motion that's is. To uh, to pay the Matt Foster logging and tree an additional thirty uh, one thirty four dollars to complete the project on um, Barnes Bliss and Murray roads uh, to cover the cost of the additional trees that were found there, there marked trees is, is that your motion Scott that is correct good job Paul. and authorize and authorize uh, the town administrator to accept the revised quote. Uh, yeah. Did you say that? I, I think so. Yeah. Yep. 
I must have been paused. Yeah. <laughs> so Scott mumbled that quickly. <laughs> yes, exactly. I just Say, on the ventriloquist. <laughs> Carl? Yes. Carl, uh, Steve Miracle um, just came on. And I, I think on the agenda we were at 650, so he just came on. I don't know if he wanted, he's one of the affected landowners. I don't know if he wanted to uh, speak on this. Okay, let's see if we have a second for the motion and then we can have discussion on the motion. Is there someone who wants to second the motion? Okay, John. I'll yeah. second it. Okay. Hello, Stephen. We have um, been talking about the, the project and uh, <clears throat> there's a motion on the floor now to pay the logger uh, to complete the project. There were more trees marked than were um, represented to the bidders and we want uh, him to complete the project on, on these roads and are willing to pay him to do so. So that's the state of the discussion. Uh, did you have any comments on, on this project you wanted to make? Um, not so much. Uh, I understand that the town is going to pick up the wood that's laying on the side of the road and carry it somewhere and dump it in a pile. Is that correct? It's... <clears throat> Guthrie and his crew will come through and we'll pick all that stuff up and get it off the road so we don't have a lot of people out there with their own equipment and whatever in the traffic trying to trying to do yeah, that. I was, so, I was picturing so. uh, being out there with my tractor doing just what you just suggested we don't want to have. And I realized that my being in the road with my tractor picking up that wood uh, I don't have insurance to drive my tractor on the road, and you know I'm not sure if that's a good idea. So I'm happy to hear that somebody else is taking that on. All right. So what? Because we have your sheet that says you know you want to keep the wood and everything. That's yeah. why we came and find to find out where you wanted it, and when the uh, you know, yeah. picks that up, they'll bring it in and dump it where you. Okay laid out the stakes yeah that's planned ahead of time just so that uh we don't have complications with that and have people be safe okay well that's the only thing i was curious about so okay so. Any, thank you any further discussion yeah. on the seeing none all those in favor of the motion please indicate by saying aye Aye. Aye. All opposed, please say nay. Uh, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. Motion passes. Anything else you want us to consider while you are here, members of the Resilient Roads Committee, uh, having to do with ashes, uh, uh, hazardous things, or any other resilient roads projects? Well, I think until we get this one done, we probably just get better keep our nose to the grindstone. So okay. I, uh, what I would just say is feel free to call us if you have any questions or issues, because uh, we'd like to handle them before <clears throat> they show up in our uh, area of experience here. Right, well, your noses on the grindstone have, have done a great amount of work along the roads sides of East Montpelier. So thank you for that. And we will certainly do, speaking for myself, I want us to do what we can to get you the funding to accelerate the project as you discussed. It's well, good to hear. I'll mention one other thing. Uh, as you probably recall, we were working on a shade tree preservation plan uh, under the new state law. And we've sort of put that on the shelf for now, uh, but you may see that uh, come back at some point. Good, good. Those have been interesting discussions. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, All right, I'll sign it out. So the next item on the agenda is consideration of notice of intent to participate the FY 2024 Municipal Roads Grants in Aid Program. We have something about it in the select board memo. Gina, would you like to, or Guthrie, who, who would like to present this to us? Well, this is something that comes up annually. Yeah. Um, so it's the same form as last year. It essentially just gives us the ability to um, submit for funds um, for any projects complying mm -hmm. with this. So the form 
actually it was in your packet that I have up here as well. Um, if we're good with signing up for this year, then we can get Carl to sign it and send it in. Good. And are there any grants to signing up for? Not that I'm aware of now. Money. No. It doesn't necessarily obligate us to anything directly. Right. More gives us an opportunity. Right. Yeah. And and the opportunity to improve certain segments of roads that might be eroding or causing problems. So generally the hydrologically. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. right. So it's a good thing. Yeah. And do we have any specific applications in mind that we might want to be making this year? I got kicked out of the first two last year and we ended up somewhere I didn't really think was totally great. So we're going to try a little harder this year to find a better first choice. So How'd you get kicked out? They were not, wasn't considered enough work in the area. Oh, hmm. it wasn't a bang for the buck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So sounds like you're not, not ready to divulge what you'll be applying for yet. You're yeah, still working on it. Yeah. Okay. This spring showed us a few spots that could use some improvement. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Just okay. have to figure out which one's going to be the most hydrologically connected, how that's going to play into it. Right. Yeah. Right. And could you explain what hydrological connection is? Where a road cross sections with a waterway mm -hmm. or the discharge from an area road heads towards a waterway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this, this would be road work that would both increase the um, the resilience of the roads, uh, reduce our long-term maintenance on them, and protect local waterways it, from it the results of road erosion. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So a uh, motion would be in order to approve the submission of the notice of intent to participate in the FY 2024 Municipal Roads Grants in Aid Program and to authorize the vice chair to sign the letter. So moved. Is there a second? I see a second. Okay, <laughs> second Zoe. Uh, I, wanted, I wanted Zoe to make the motion, her first motion, but maybe for the next one. <laughs> uh, discussion on the motion. I can second it. Seeing, <laughs> seeing none. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those. Uh, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. Motion passes. And then we move on to the access permit 23010 for a new curb cut on lot eight in Pine Ridge Road. <clears throat> Where is Pine Ridge Road? How about Fall Square? Okay. Yeah, I see it. The last page, actually. Yeah. I mean, it's not a yeah, very close to Paul Claire. Yeah, it's it's Paul Claire in Brighton Boulevard. Yeah, yeah. 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 what sign you're looking at, right? This one on like most requires no forward. Yeah. Okay. And uh this new development. Travel across the first lot yeah. out to a further, further lot that they didn't lot. That, that's undeveloped. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, what What do you want to say to us about this? No, nothing. Uh, okay. It's it's good. Yeah. If Chase and Chase, the engineer behind the whole project so far, all the all the groundwork, and they're always meticulous about everything. So right. Okay. It's been really well thought out. Okay. So a motion would be in order to approve access application 23010. Zoe, Zoe. Are you making a motion? I'm still it up. Okay, would anyone like to make the motion? I'll make the motion to accept the curb cut. Okay. As stated. Would anyone like to second it? I'd like to second it. Okay, very good. <laughs> uh, further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. The motion passes. And then we have warrants, the expense report. So, Zoe, this is uh, the warrant review is essentially a review of all the checks. So, every select board meeting, we have checks essentially 
coinciding with the meeting. So this is a list of all the vendors and payments that, that we are making. So it's an opportunity. Sometimes people will ask questions like what's a month room shoe? Because <laughs> um, usually there's questions on things with the highway department. Just for, it's not questioning the bill. It's some of it is, what is this? Um, which I usually don't have a great answer for. If it's Did you something say you have seen them? Did I? There was one at the top. There's a pair of them. You didn't point it out. You told me what it is. Is it the real thing? It's yeah, real it thing. is. Yeah. Yeah. And it gets worse. I have a banana shoe I need to. <laughs> I need a pair of those also. So it's going to be even worse. So it gets better. Okay. Any thought use? Yeah. Yeah. The foot frame shoe is for a tank over. Yeah. So the one of them is really all right. Yeah. So for this, you'll, you'll see just various listings. Sometimes the notes on them are a little bit mysterious, and, and we're often asking questions, like as, as Gina said, about that. You'll see the sum varies from, here's one for $10 for a training that Gina took, and then here's one for $2,194,577 for the school system. That's a school tax payment. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so what Carl also has, copies, all of the actual invoices come with this. So they'll a lot of times pass it around among the, so if you want to look at an invoice, it's there. Yeah, the invoice will have much more yeah. information than the, uh, the coding on this two-page. Yeah. So we don't need a motion for this. We just pass it around and plan it. And while those are being passed around and inspected, we have a quorum here. So with the three of us signing it, then, then it's approved. Uh, then we can go to the town administrative report. Pretty short and sweet. Just a reminder that the town clerk is out of the office this week. So uh, Denise is filling in Monday through Wednesday, and we have a little, we have some signs out there with a little bell asking people to ring. So like Denise left, I think she left like four days. So then Michelle and I are kind of on deck if right. anyone comes to answer any questions and you know let people know. So people have come in needing things that unfortunately needed the town clerk. So, you know, we're letting people know that she's, we'll be back on Monday. So everyone's, you know, understanding and appreciates the information and we do what we can, but. Um, so it's so working out okay. Today went okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Good. mostly it's tax payments coming in. Right. So that, that's the most of what we're seeing right now. Sure. So luckily we can, we can handle that part. So. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, and Denise knows obviously the front office really well. So yes. uh, she, you know, there are certain things, you know, we can't do dog licenses mostly because the system changed in the time from when Denise left and she doesn't have access to the new system. And we just decided it was easier to let those wait a week. Most of them were kind of past the rush of that anyway. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And this is our first meeting since the uh, special town meeting with the vote on the Keller Hubbard Library. So that was oh, yes. the results were announced on Front Porch Forum. Yes. For our records, we should probably announce them here. Um, I didn't, have, I don't have the numbers. Don't have figure, the numbers right in front of me. I could get them on the website because uh, they are there. I have some numbers in my head that they could very well be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, the, the long and the short of it was that it passed by an overwhelming margin, the, the vote to fund the Teller Harbor Library in the amount that they requested for this year. That we intended to put before the voters on town meeting day and messed up on the ballot. Yes, we had 646 votes cast and 574. 646, yeah, and 574 were. No, 526. Yes, 120 now, 646 in total. I'm not sure what the 574 is actually. Um, so that was a revolt. Okay. Good and other business in your town administrator report in the select board memo, you say there's been one new permit application since yeah. the last meeting. And yes. you very next late have our meeting scheduled through September and very helpful to have that because it's a bit irregular over the summer. Yes, and I did add the um, 
fire department meeting for August 10th. That's helpful too. So that is on this list as well. Yeah. So there's a meeting that happens. I think there's a year. Yeah. I don't it, think we do. It's starting as a quarterly meeting and we may still yeah. call it a quarterly meeting, but then we drop one of them along the way. Yeah. So it's a meeting with the fire department. So Callis attends that meeting as well. Um, In so, theory? Yeah, yeah they, they did not attend the last one. They're, they're undergoing a change in uh -huh. their entire select board. So um, I think there was a little bit of confusion on who was on deck, but um, but we typically do attend those meetings. But uh, after Rose, uh, one of the biggest uh, posts on our budget is our funding for the fire department, which is an independent nonprofit entity. It's not owned by the town and not under the town's direct purview the way it is in a lot of places. And so we try to keep in, in close contact with them over the course of the year to see how the finances are going. And when they want to make certain expenditures, uh, then they need to come to us by, by the agreement that we have with them. Uh, they need to come to us for uh, with a request. And uh, we currently have a fire truck, a uh, new fire truck in the process of being built for us. And uh, that's all approved in both Dallas and, and here. And now we're just working with them to get them the money that they need at certain points in the construction process. Okay. Is there any other business to bring before the meeting today in the Slack board? Thank you for sharing it, Carl. Absolutely. Thank you for coming, even though Seth wasn't here to chair it. <laughs> well, if there's no Nothing other else? I'll make yes. the motion to adjourn if there's no other business. Okay. Is there a second? Yes, Zoe. All of the paper of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Uh, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. We are adjourned at 707. Yeah. Like one of the earliest meetings we've ever had. Yeah. No, I think that's a long meeting. Ages. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Take care, everybody.